So the most common question I've gotten since I started racing go-karts is, what's it like to be a woman race car driver? Specifically now, maybe, what on earth is a New York-raised, Stanford-educated female doing behind the wheel of a race car? <laughs> But the reality is, why not? Racing is one of the most unique sports because biology doesn't prevent men and women from competing together. Now, it is a sport, so I'm going to have you do me a favor and put your hands out like you're driving without hitting the person in front of you. Awesome. Close your eyes, and you're starting to turn left, turn left, and you're muscling around 3,400 pounds of machine, and then you straighten up, and then you're getting within an inch of the wall. It's 130 degrees in the car, and you're fully suited up with a helmet that weighs a pound or two, and you're doing this for hours. Open your eyes. It's tough. <laughs> But because biology doesn't prevent men and women from competing together, there's got to be something else. And I firmly believe that social and cultural norms and stereotypes are preventing women from getting involved. Because what is the one thing that girls are always told they have to be? Nice. But I'm going to tell you, <laughs> niceness loses races. Racing is an exceptionally difficult sport, and not everyone can do it. So as a woman, we have to not only prove ourselves on the racetrack, but fight through these stupid stereotypes that just hold us back. And there are three main stereotypes that I think I have discovered while I've been racing that I'm familiar with in racing, but I'm sure that they apply to many other fields. The first is that women aren't aggressive. And girls are told early on that being aggressive is a bad thing. This photo was taken when I was 14 years old, and it was the first national go-kart race of the year, and we were in Daytona Beach, Florida. I was really excited. I had done very well in practice. We were up in the top three, top five out of 40, and I was just ready to go win. Race day comes, and I stayed about the same while everyone else got a lot better all my male counterparts. And this was frustrating, and it had happened at several races before this. So one morning of the next race day, my dad walks into my hotel room a little bit early, comes up to my bed and says, Julia, get up, looks at me and says, you need to rip their livers out. <laughs> These boys just got beat by a girl the other day. They're not going to sleep. Their parents aren't letting them sleep. And you need to be just as angry. In retrospect, <laughs> I realized that my dad was essentially giving me permission to break free of what I was being told, how I was being told to behave and go destroy everyone on the racetrack. <laughs> and it was great, and it was scary, and I'm sure it was scary for him and my mom to support me completely breaking against every social norm and appropriate behavior. The second assumption that I had to learn about was that it's acceptable to take the victim role. And not only that, but I feel like it's very expected for women to take the victim role. This photo was taken when I was 11 years old at our local go-kart track. And um, it was just one race day, and I had gone out and, again, done very well in our time trials. And I was starting third or fourth, but I went to my parents and told them, OK, I'd like you to change X, Y, and Z on the go-kart to make it better. Go out to race, and the cart was not doing what I wanted. And I was getting more and more frustrated. One cart after the other were going by me, and then I was just losing it. I finished somewhere at the back, and I get off the racetrack and was the most pissed off 11-year-old that you will ever see. <laughs> I pushed my go-kart up to this pit and dropped all my stuff off and ran up to my parents and said, you messed up the go-kart. It would have been so much better if you had done this and this, and I could have won. And then my dad looked at me, and I realized I had messed up. And he walked up to me, and he said, you. <laughs> you told me to make that change to the go-kart, and I did. And if it wasn't what you wanted, too bad. It is you and the go-kart on that track, and it's your responsibility to make it work. Sorry about that. <laughs> And he was right. You know, it might not have been an ideal situation, and it might have completely been his fault, but the fact is that I had to take my situation, own it, make it mine, and make the best of it. The third assumption about women that I find most personally offensive is that women are fragile. 
women are routinely portrayed as emotionally and physically fragile. And the thing is, we're not. I have some three... <laughs> I have some 300 pounds of go-karts on my neck. And I'm fine, right? I'm standing up today. And this is problematic. And I've been told you... Tell, I've, excuse me. I've told you stories that I learned in go-karts early on. But I'm still facing and fighting these assumptions as I've moved into race cars. Last spring, I was racing in Sacramento and Stockton area, and I had brought my resume and all my wins and championships to this team. I was super excited. I thought they were super excited. Um, a couple races in, I had won once and we were doing well. And one of the guys on the team who was helping me out takes me aside and says, Jules, you know, when I heard that we were going to have a girl on the team, I was just bummed. I thought we were going to be racing around the back all season, but we're not. And I realized that he was trying to compliment me, but at the same time, my team, that's supposed to be my backbone, had very little faith in me and didn't expect me to be racing on the edge and at the limit. There's a study that where researchers asked mothers to set the steepness of a ramp for how they thought their toddler could climb up. Mothers routinely set the ramp steeper for their boys than they did for their girls. So from toddlerhood, we are priming our daughters not to take risks, not to push themselves, not to fall down, and not to learn how to pick themselves back up. And this directly affects how people interact with them as I learned as a professional racer with my team. So because being a woman that society tells me to be and being a race car driver that I really want to be are at odds with each other, we have to break the rules. And racing is not particularly scary for me. Going over 130 miles an hour, getting within a couple inches of the wall, racing side by side with someone, and crashing, although unpleasant, is not very scary breaking centuries of negative perceptions of women is a little daunting, but very important. So back to the original question of what's it like to be a woman race car driver, it's awesome. <laughs> it is fabulous. Being in the zone is so cool. It's me operating with the car, operating with the racetrack on a subconscious level. Nothing in the outside world matters. Someone told me a couple years ago that when you master a corner and you get within a couple centimeters of the wall, it's better than sex. <laughs> <laughs> and it is so satisfying to do something exceptionally well that people don't expect me to be able to do at all. And I think that my situation as a female racer, and I'm sure many of your situations out there, is summed up nicely in a quote that I read from Arata, which is, that if it's both terrifying and amazing, you should definitely pursue it. Thank you.